Very good morning. Welcome to the programme. We're talking climate change this morning. Rupert Reid, uh, straight through this morning, uh, and is, of course going to argue this from the Green Party perspective, but also uh, from um, this new group, Extinction Rebellion, who are doing uh, this uh, campaign that I referenced outside on the steps of the forum the other day. So let's talk about this, Rupert. Is this a big change? Now, now we've got to the point this gold standard has been bestowed upon a lot of this research. Surely at this point, climate change, man-made climate change deniers have to stand down. Well, yeah, if they were rational, they would. Um, Unfortunately, many of them are are not motivated by rationality or truth-seeking. They uh, simply have got a a fixed idea and and they won't listen to any kind of reason. But they're more and more irrelevant, Nick. Even in the United States, the clear, clear majority of people now are clear on the threat of dangerous man-made climate change and understand that we need to change course. And President Trump is increasingly uh, isolated in this regard and is looking more and more uh, absurd. We should just ignore them now, I think, and, and get on with actually facing up to climate reality and starting to make some of the absolutely urgently needed changes that Mm. that we must make if we are to head off the worst consequences of what's coming down the pike at us. We could also see this as a head start. Uh, Sorry, this is away from the fact that we need to, you know, we should be concentrating on this area and looking at at how we can try and change policies. But we could see this as a a head start in as much as we would then be able to uh, start developing technology which provides a solution to the problem and is a head start on the Americans, who very often are at the forefront of of technology technology development, um, because they have an administration that's... that's, uh, that's denying that, that this is happening. So surely Britain should see this as an opportunity. Yeah, I think that's right to some extent. There is clearly uh, a lot of economic activity that needs to occur to address the problem of dangerous climate change, and that includes technological innovation. One of the most basic and essential things we need to do is there needs to be an enormous investment in better insulation so that we don't waste the energy that we use. We still have an enormous amount of housing stock, for instance, in this country that is not properly insulated. And really disastrously, most of the new housing that's being built is really grossly inadequate in terms of these kinds of standards. It's not just that that a lot of new housing doesn't have renewable energy built into it, which is a shame, but even more basically, it's not even up to the top standards for insulation. I think, however, it would be a mistake, Nick, to think that there's going to be a pure technological fix to this problem. We're in so deep now and it's so severe that the kind of changes that we need to make are going to need to involve significant behavioral change as well, change in our practices, change in some aspects of our way of life. That's why Extinction Rebellion is saying that we need to have a really near-term target for Britain to go carbon zero. Extinction Rebellion is saying that should be 2025. And that's going to mean that we're not just changing technologies. It's also going to mean that we're simply going to have to get used to driving less, for example. Uh, We're simply going to have to get used to flying less. That may sound difficult to some people. Of course, it's also going to have massive upsides. We live in a society where there's a huge problem of air pollution, a huge problem of ill health and obesity uh, due to air pollution and due to people driving too much when they should be walking or cycling. There's a kind of potential win-win here. If we can change our way of life in such a way that we're less dependent on fossil fuels, producing less carbon emissions, and we can become healthier and more locally focused in the process. How do we really bring about change? I, I came down, I wandered down to the um, the protest that was going on outside the forum the other day. I was talking to a number of uh, young people and it was really, really interesting to hear what they had to say. Um, and forgive me for just picking up on one person here, which I think is grossly unfair to the hundreds who turned up. But one, one individual said to me when I said, you know, what are you prepared to give up? Uh, he, he said that he was prepared to give up a, a skiing holiday, but he took three other holidays in the year. Um, and we spoke about it, and I said, do you not think that there needs to be much bigger concessions made than just that? That's just a token gesture. Actually, the sacrifice that needs to be made is phenomenal when we think about it and what we're trying to achieve in terms of reducing our carbon footprint. And that actually started a little mini discussion with the people that I was standing around. And there was actually a willingness to accept that something dramatic has got to happen. Um, so do, mm. do you think that the problem here is that actually when you look at what we are suggesting needs to happen, it's quite unpalatable? Well, it can seem initially unpalatable to people and it can seem like a sacrifice. 
again, what I'd say here is that if you actually look at it carefully, if we do it in the right way, and that's absolutely crucial. Uh, you mentioned that I'm in the Green Party. Obviously, Green Party policy is all about trying to do it in the right way. Then it doesn't need to be a sacrifice. We can actually find ways that can, in many ways, improve our lives in the process. We can have a higher quality of life, for example, if we have less air pollution, less cars clogging our streets, more people walking and cycling, for example, to school or to the office. Um, in terms of holidays, we need to be looking at the, uh, the virtue of having more holidays closer to home, the incredible beauty and riches of this country, of this county. Uh, like many listeners, I'm sure, uh, to your program, Nick, I spend a lot of time in the Norfolk Broads and on the North Norfolk Coast. Uh, it's such, such extraordinary places. Why are we always trying to rush away from where we live and where we exist and the places that we know and love to find something new? I think it's got something to do with short attention spans and a kind of binge consumerism that we found ourselves getting into. And you know what, Nick? It doesn't make people happy. When people are always looking for the next hit, almost like they're addicts, when people are always trying to fall for the advertisers' kind of false promises, it doesn't make people happy. We can have an alternative kind of future, which is actually going to have a higher quality of life, but it is going to involve substantial change. Those substantial changes are definitely going to come, Nick. The only question is this. Are we going to do them intelligently and voluntarily and rapidly? Or are we going to leave it a bit longer and leave it too long? And then an enraged nature will force those changes upon us. Our system is either going to be changed voluntarily in a transformational way, or it is going to come crashing down. And I hope that we don't choose the, the latter route. That would be such a stupid thing to do, to wait and prevaricate until we push nature so hard that our entire system collapses. It's happened to civilizations around the world in past history. Let's be intelligent enough to make sure that it doesn't happen to us. Rupert, great to have you on as always. Thanks so much for your time. You take care. Thanks. Rupert Reed there from the Green Party and also from uh, this new group which has set up uh, Extinction Rebellion, uh, which is campaigning in this area.